Hello there and welcome to this tutorial video on installing MongoDB in Ubuntu Linux using Amazon EC2. Now, if you're doing this as part of my Bizan 6356 class, remember this is optional. However, it is highly encouraged because there's a lot of great stuff you can learn here. So to get started, just go to aws.amazon.com and recall, just like before, if you haven't created an account yet, you will need to go ahead and do that. And be forewarned that in order to create an account, you do have to provide a credit card number. So as you follow along with this tutorial, as long as you are careful to select all of the free options, and I'm going to point out what will keep you on the free tier, you should not incur any charges. Uh, however, I can't be held responsible if you click on the wrong thing or something like that. So just be careful about what you're selecting and you should be able to do this for no cost. So I'm going to go ahead and click this orange button to sign into the console. And here we have the AWS landing page. I'm going to go up to the services menu and select EC2. In order to connect to the instance, once we get it deployed, we are going to need to authenticate with a private key. If you already generated a private key as part of the HBase installation, you can just use that key over again and you don't need to create a new one. But let's go through the steps of creating a private key just to make sure everyone is on the same page. So on the left hand side here under network and security, click on this link that says key pairs. And I have a couple of things here. If you haven't created a private key already, you won't have anything here but just click this orange button that says create key pair. Let's give it a name. I'm gonna call this MongoDB demo. And you have two options for the file format, either PEM or PPK. Uh, if you're going to be using PuTTY, the PPK file is going to be easier to use. If you do the PEM, there are a few steps you have to go through to convert it to a file that PuTTY can use. So I would suggest just doing the PPK file Click on create key pair. And when you do that, now you see you have your uh, key show up in the list and also a file was downloaded to your computer. Now for all practical intents and purposes, this file is your password. So you need to store it somewhere secure and somewhere that you know where to access it. So I would go ahead and just open up your downloads folder and maybe drag this over to the uh, folder where you keep all of your documents about this class, but that file is going to be your password. So once you have that created, let's uh, go up to the instances link. And uh, here you can see I have quite a few things running. Uh, I'm going to be blurring out quite a few things during this video just for the safety of our existing environment. Um, if you went through the HBase installation, you might have one or more HBase servers running here, or you might have nothing at all. But regardless of the state you're currently in, to get started, just click on this orange button up in the top right corner that says Launch Instances. And now we are taken to a page where we can select what operating system we want on this instance. We have a couple of different flavors of Linux. As we scroll down, we see we have all the different versions of, uh, of Windows and, and some other things we can choose from. Um, all of these different Linux options are, are going to be more or less the same for the, uh, for the purpose of what we're going to be doing here. But uh, personally, I, uh, I really like using Ubuntu, so that's what we are going to select. The Ubuntu Server 20.04. So click on Select. And now here's the first time you have a choice you need to make that might uh, wind up costing you money. You see you have this option for the t2.micro instance and it says free tier eligible. Just make sure that is what you've selected. Okay, any of these other selections are going to cost you a little bit of money. Uh, if you go with the small or a medium, it's maybe two or five cents an hour or something like that. I mean, it's relatively inexpensive, but uh, for just playing around and testing this out, I would suggest just going with this free t2.micro instance. Okay, now we're not gonna change any of the other settings, but let's go ahead and just click through them and see uh, what our other options are. So I'm gonna click next, configure instance details. 
And this is the screen where we have the option to change some of our uh, network parameters and what happens when you uh, tell AWS you want to stop this instance. We'll just leave all this the same. Here, if we wanted to add additional hard drive space to our instance, we could do that. For what we're doing, just kind of playing around right now, eight gigs should be sufficient. So I'm gonna click next, add tags. And uh, what this is, is where we can add some description of our instance. Now in this case where we have just the one or maybe just a handful of instances, not really very, uh, uh, very necessary, but if you were working in a large environment where you had hundreds of uh, AWS instances, this might be a good way that you could put a note on your instance saying what business unit it's for, or what application it's for, or something like that. Okay, next we'll click uh, Configure Security Group, and uh, AWS is going to automatically create a security group. And since this is a Linux server and the vast majority of the time, the way we're going to connect to a Linux server is through SSH, which runs on TCP port 22, uh, AWS has already pre-configured that as a firewall rule. So I'm going to click the blue button that says Review and Launch. And it, uh, it gives us some details here and click the launch button. And now we have to select the key pair that we want to use to authenticate. So you should have in the list the key pair that you just created, or you could use the key pair that you generated as part of the uh, HBase demo if you, if you have that. But I'm going to select this MongoDB demo key pair. You have to check the box. It says, I acknowledge I have access to this private key because if you do this and you don't have the private key, there is literally no way you can authenticate uh, to this server. So you would just have to start over. I'm gonna click this blue button that says launch instances. And in just a moment, this will take us back to the EC2 dashboard, or it'll take us to this screen. When we click view instances, we're back at our dashboard and you see we have this new instance that is in a state of pending. So this is gonna take just a, a couple of minutes to get up and running. So we'll pause the video for a moment and come back when it's finished. All right, so our instance has finished deploying. The instance state says running. Uh, just to make things a little bit more clear, uh, over here in the name column, I'm gonna click on this button to uh, add a name to this, and I'm gonna call this uh, Mongo Demo. So we know what that is. Uh, when you click on your instance, you see here at the bottom, you get a bunch of details about the instance. And one of the most important things for connecting is this public IPv4 address. So this is the address that we're going to use to connect to our instance via PuTTY. So I'm gonna select that and copy it. And then I am going to launch PuTTY on my computer, drag this over here, and I'm going to zoom in so you can see a little bit better. I'm going to paste that IP address right here where it says host name. And it's probably a good idea to just create a, a saved session to make it easier to get back to this in the future. So I'm going to call this uh, saved session Mongo demo and click save. And uh, the other thing we need to do, because we mentioned that we're going to be authenticating using that, using that private key, is to in the left hand side where you see SSH, expand that and then click on off. And then right here, it asks for the private key file for authentication. So I'm going to click on the browse button and I am going to navigate to where that file is stored. And in my case, I've just kept it in my downloads folder, but again, I would suggest you put this in uh, maybe the folder you have all your class material uh, stored in. So mongodbdemo.ppk, click open. Once I've made that change, I actually need to save my profile again, so that gets uh, recorded within PuTTY. And I am going to click the open button to open my connection. Now, the first time you connect, you're going to get this warning that says the server's host key is not cached in the registry. That's just saying that your computer or your installation of PuTTY doesn't recognize the server you're connecting to. Are you sure you really want to do this? Click yes. 
Okay, and now you have a login prompt. Okay, so the username we need to log in as is Ubuntu. And then when you hit enter, it's going to use the private key file to authenticate. And now we are connected to our server. And now one thing I'm going to point out here, and this is very common in, in Linux operating systems, is that this Ubuntu user that we have connected as has just kind of regular user privileges. And in order to do anything more powerful on the server, we have to put this special command sudo, S-U-D-O, in front of the command. And basically what that is going to do is for that one command, elevate you to having administrative privileges on the uh, on the server. This is kind of like in Windows when you get that uh, window that pops up and says you need administrative rights to do this, you know, click OK to run as administrator. Okay, so a lot of the commands we're going to be using to install MongoDB will have to say sudo in front of it. Now, one thing I will point out as we're getting started is there is great documentation on MongoDB's website for installing uh, MongoDB on uh, all different versions of Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. So if you just Google uh, MongoDB install on Ubuntu, you will find these exact same uh, instructions that we are about to go through. So let me switch back over to our server and we'll get started with that. Now, one of the really nice things about most Linux distributions is they have a package manager. So Windows has kind of moved in this direction over the last couple of years, but generally in Windows, if you want to install a piece of software, you go to the website, you download the, uh, the executable or the installer file, you install it and you can go through all that. In most Linux distributions, there's a package manager that keeps track of popular pieces of software. And with a few commands, you can tell the package manager to just automatically and go out and install either the latest version or, or a specific version of this software. And it reaches out over the internet, downloads it, installs it, configures it, and if you want, even can keep it up to date. So we're going to be using the apt package manager, which is a part of Ubuntu. Uh, in just a moment. But before we do that, we need to uh, tell apt where we want to install MongoDB from. And to do that, we first need to run a couple of commands to uh, tell our Linux installation to trust the repository that we're going to be downloading this from. So first of all, we are going to add this key to our uh, to our server, and then we are going to run this command, which is going to add the MongoDB repository to uh, the list of repositories that apt is going to look in. So next, we just need to tell apt to update its list of repositories that it's going to be looking in. And to do that, we uh, first type sudo to get an elevated uh, execution of this. Type apt get update. Okay, this will take just a moment and it's just kind of refreshing. And you see here at the end, it's now going to be looking in this uh, repo.mongodb.org and it is done. And now all we need to do is tell the package manager that we want to install MongoDB. So I'm going to type sudo apt git install and then we have to tell it the name of the package which in this case is mongodb-org now when we do this apt is just telling us it's going to be downloading 104 meg of data and the installation is going to take 200 meg of disk space i'm going to say yes i do want to do this okay, now it's reaching out over the internet to mongodb.org downloading the installation files Installing MongoDB. And we'll give this just a minute to run. All right, and at this point, as simple as that, MongoDB is installed on our Linux server. So now we just need to start the MongoDB server and we do that with this uh, command here, uh, systemctl start. 
And this looks like Mon God, but this is actually MongoD. Uh, you'll find a lot of Linux services in with the letter D, which uh, stands for daemon. And there is a big lot of uh, a lot of history behind why that is. Uh, but just know that uh, this is the Mongo daemon, which is the Mongo server process that uh, that is going to be stored or running our database. So sudo uh, systemctl start mongod, we do that. Now mongo is up and running. We can verify that by asking about the status. It says, yes, we are active and running. And we're going to run one more systemctl command to make mongod just start when the computer boots up. And that's to say sudo systemctl enable mongod. Okay, and now if we reboot the server, Mongo database is going to automatically start up. So now that MongoDB is up and running, let's uh, go ahead and just try to connect to it. So we're going to connect by launching the Mongo client and then the name of whatever database we want to connect to. And as described in the other videos, there are no databases that exist yet, but any database we try to connect to will be created as soon as we write data to it. So I'm going to type Mongo test. And now we are connected to MongoDB. We said something like show collections. We see there currently is not anything. If we wanted to insert into our collection a, uh, a document describing the uh, town uh, or the city of New York, uh, we say db.towns.insert. And then here is our JSON object. And we could say db.towns.find and see that we do actually have uh, this object in our MongoDB database. So just like that, we have a MongoDB instance up and running. I hope you found this information useful. And with this knowledge, go forth and do great things.